So what is GPT all about? And more importantly, what are some of the things that people have already started doing with it in just two days, the things that people are doing with it? Now, what's unique about GPT-4 is that, number one, the platform is multimodal. Means it doesn't only accept text inputs, but also images. For example, you can upload a photograph or a diagram or a screenshot and ask GPT to describe it or solve a mystery. The makers tested the model by uploading these photos on GPT-4 and asked it to point out what was funny in these images. GPT-4 did not disappoint. It replied saying, the humor in this image comes from the absurdity of plugging a large outdated VGA connector into small modern smartphone charging ports. GPT-4 was on point. And all of this, by the way, just illustrates how ridiculous it is that we are still trying to prevent robots from getting onto something, saying, capture, can you interpret this image? Look what GPT-4 can do. But it goes on. GPT-4 has the ability to process up to 25,000 words, which is around eight times more than chat GPT. Also, GPT-4 can turn your ideas into reality. This engineer, for example, uploaded a handwritten note of a dummy website that he wanted to create. GPT-4 turned it into a legit website there and then. He then uploaded a photos of a few ingredients, flour, egg, butter, and asked GPT-4, what can you make with these ingredients? Look at GPT-4's reply, pancakes or waffles, crepes, French toast, omelets. It then goes on to give other recipe ideas, adding, these are just a few examples, but the possibilities are endless. But that is just the starting point. In the last two or three days, the things that people have done with it, well, here is one of the threads that, for example, breaks it down to you. I want to give you just a few examples, like we showed you. You can turn your scribbles into apps and websites. That famous example of, I wrote something on a napkin and then I had to program it. Write something on a napkin, GPT-4 can convert it into a website for you. Here's another practical example of what somebody did. You can ask GPT-4 to build a video game for you, and voila, you no longer need a coder. Take a look at this. GPT-4 built a Pong game in minutes. You can use GPT-4 to add context to your story. Say you're struggling with the caption of your next Instagram post. Upload the photo on GPT-4. Ask it to describe the photo for you. It's going to oblige. Something else that you can do. Ask GPT-4 to type a lawsuit for you, like this man did. A telemarketer calling you up. Instant lawsuit in less than a few seconds, and it can go to the person. Well, you're basically saving legal costs out here. But then again, of course, none of this is foolproof, so you may want to pay someone to proofread it once for you. You can also ask GPT-4 to help you with daily chores, like coming up with party ideas or helping you write a letter, a resume, a covering letter, anything. You see, the possibilities are essentially endless. You just need to start exploring this and figuring out the best way that you can do it. And sometimes, as in my case, I actually asked GPT-4, how do I use you to help me with ABC? And it did it. It did it in a matter of seconds. But for me, some of the most fascinating examples have been even more open-ended than that. Many people have said that, oh, all these generative models and these large language models like GPT are essentially just autocomplete on steroids. It's just completing stuff, doesn't really have any intelligence. But some people have been doing things that are way more open-ended. There's a famous example, many such examples actually, running on Hustle GPT. They're calling it Hustle GPT, where people are saying, here you are, GPT-4, here's, I have $100, help me make this into a business. And GPT-4 is doing everything, coming up with the idea, coming up with how to market it, coming up with the logo, coming up with what they should do next. Everything is being done by GPT-4. And this is really making people think. You're now moving more and more towards human-level intelligence and human-level performance. OpenAI, by the way, actually believes that this platform exhibits human-level performance on various professional and academic benchmarks. GPT-4, for example, has taken language tests. It scored 85.5% in English, 73.2% in Bengali, 62% in Marathi and, and, and Telugu, respectively. OpenAI made GPT-4 take practice papers or a whole range of exams. Look at the results. It got 80th percentile in the GRE quantitative, 99th percentile in GRE verbal. It also passed the bar exam. Earlier this week, OpenAI's chief executive, Sam Altman, tweeted about uh, GPT-4, saying it's still flawed, still limited, but it still seems more impressive on first use than it does 
after you spend more time with it. The OpenAI blog makes this point too. It says, and I'm quoting again, despite its capabilities, GPT-4 has similar limitations as earlier GPT models. Most importantly, it is still not fully reliable as it hallucinates facts and makes reasoning errors. It is not perfect, but the big question that you need to keep in mind is, this technology, like all other technologies, is getting better with time, and it will continue to do so. Remember what happened with the iPhone, that first phone, the first mobile phone? Compare it with what you have right now. Don't think about GPT-4 has. Think of what GPT-6 will be like, or GPT-10, or GPT-40. Till then, yes, there will be answers that are misleading. Of course, there will be misinformation. But like every problem out there, in this case also, solutions could follow, could be sooner, could be later, could be wrong, and perhaps, far from solutions coming up, some big existential problems are going to come up, and I'm going to be talking to you about that in just a couple of minutes. But what I can tell you is, this world is changing, and this world is changing forever. So please pay attention to all of this. Meet Aarti Prabhakar. She's the director of the White House's Office of Science and Technology Policy. Early this week, she was part of a panel at a conference where she said, and I quote, what we are all seeing is the emergence of this extremely powerful technology. One of her panelists replied, saying, if in six months you are not completely freaked out, then I will buy you dinner. This co-panelist was Austin Carlson, the founder of Seed AI. World is changing. Pay attention to it. Please do it. How can you, by the way, use uh, GPT-4? Well, for starters, you need to get a, a premium version. You need to pay for it. Unlike GPT-3, th th this sort of version requires you to buy tokens or be, be part of a plus campaign. Each token costs a certain amount of money. That's the starting point. But Microsoft has now said it's building GPT into Word and Excel, which means it's going to be everywhere everywhere and that's another reason you need to think about this and pay serious attention because if you're not paying attention the person next to you could be and he or she will then have an advantage that you cannot match this is something that is going to be affecting your education your work and your life very very drastically